Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm a mother of four, it's really busy, and time is tight. I was able to return to college because of the Community College Opportunity Grant, a free tuition grant. Hudson County Community College changed my life. The college community made me feel like a person, not just a number. The Community College Opportunity Grant covers additional costs while keeping me debt free. I'm building a new future at Hudson County Community College. Well, it is right after New Year's. Actually, this is the hmm, January the 4th, I believe it is. And I hope everybody had a real good New Year's, Christmas, and Thanksgiving. I hope you did. Okay, because we did. We had a little Zoom party and some of my friends, well, we, we just got together and got on Zoom and somebody had a little music on and we were talking and joking and having a good time. Just making the best out of life, okay? I was watching TV. Oh, I say, well, I'm always watching the food show. I'm pretty sure you know that. And I saw, um, it was in, in Mexico, um, Hermosillo, Mexico, and they was making these hot dogs. And it was quite different than while we might take the hot dog and add a little mustard and ketchup, maybe a little sauerkraut and little toppings, but theirs were totally different. I made it last week and I said, well, let me share it with you. I am sure that your kids are gonna like it. I tried it and let me tell you, one was enough. Wait until you see how this works. I think you're gonna try it and you can add the toppings that you like, okay? First, I need my wine. Of course, Domaine de Riviere. Oh yeah. And Happy New Year to all of you. Mm, that was good. Okay, let's get started. It's really simple and it's a lot of fun and it's quite different, okay? First thing, I have um, a frankfurter, okay? I personally don't eat frankfurters, but I do mine with a sausage. First thing you need is a knife. I'm using this knife that we use in, at Hudson Community College uh, Culinary Arts. We use this for carving, watermelon, etc. And it's so small and it's very sharp and it works. Here is your frankfurter. You wanna take it, don't clip it, don't cut to the end at the top or the bottom. Just wanna go in like this. See that? Go straight down, if I can cut a straight line. Um, but you don't want it to go through and open up the back of the frank, all right? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna run your finger in here and make sure that it's cut deep enough because you have to stuff it with what? Cheese, that's right, and we're using Pepper Jack cheese. Now you can use any type of cheese you like to stuff inside of this frank. And I wanna get it all the way to the bottom. Can you see that? I wanna get it to the bottom. So I'm going to stuff a little bit more. Okay, look at that. Really simple. Now, like I said, you can stuff any type of cheese you want. If you get a large sausage, you can make another slice here and you can put a different type of cheese in there as well. So you have two. Okay, now, the next step, you know where I'm going? Bacon, okay? What you're gonna do is take the bacon and you're gonna start here at the top and you're going to wrap it. I'm sure that you've seen something similar to this before. I'm gonna wrap this, if I can do it carefully around your frank like this or sausage there we go there we go okay didn't i tell you it was going to be simple real easy but like i said you could you know just add another slice 
If you want, if you take your time, you can add maybe three pieces of cheese inside the slot of your sausage or frank, okay? All right, so very, look at that, simple. All right, now, after this has been cooked and I have one already cooked, I'm gonna show you how they were doing the toppings. I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta try this. And I tried it and it was so good. So let me take off my gloves. I just didn't want to cross contaminate. You know how that is. I can put them here. I'm gonna take this board, put right next to my handy stove. Now, the next step, this is where all the fun comes together when it is, when it's getting ready to be stuck and stacked. The fun part, after I have another sip of wine and another Happy New Year to you. Mm. Yes, so the next step is, I just wanna take this and start stacking it. However, before I do that, a good friend of mine, his name is Anthony Spirito. He came through Zoom, and these days, you know, we have to use Zoom. And he spent some time with me and talked about um, him as a cook. He's, he considers himself just a regular home cook and not a chef. But the conversation was really good. He talked about his family and how they fix different dishes. And he's making what? Chicken with a white mushroom sauce. I watched them through Zoom and it was really, really good. So what I would like you to do, sit back, relax, and take a look at Anthony Spirito cooking. Watch this. Hi everybody, and welcome back to In The Kitchen. Today, I have a pleasure to be once again in the presence through Zoom Chef Anthony Spirito, did I pronounce it right? Yep, you got no, it. Oh, thank you, I did it, finally. Thank you, Anthony, so much. I am so excited. I was thinking about this during the week. I said, Anthony is gonna be here because ladies and gentlemen, Anthony was the one who taught me how to jar sauces, especially <laughs> the red sauce. I wasn't sure, and I said, Anthony, help. How am I supposed to do this? And it worked out, and I thank you so much, Anthony, so much for helping me out. My my pleasure. Okay, Anthony, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. So uh, I live here in Jersey City Heights. We are uh -huh. practically neighbors, uh -huh. um, and uh, I'm a home cook. I, I don't do this for a living, but it is um, it's my passion, really. I don't want to turn it into a job because I'm afraid that if I do, I'll end up hating it. And I, I love <laughs> cooking so much that I don't want it to be a job. Uh, but I really, I really love cooking. It's, it's as I said, it's my passion. It's yeah. I'm, I'm in the kitchen all the time, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, I, I, this is not what I do for a living, but it's what I do to make me happy. So Anthony is going to make some sauteed chicken with mushroom and a white sauce. Anthony, tell us about it. As as you as you start, and I'm here looking like this. And I and by the way, I love mushrooms. Me too. I love mushrooms, and the reason why I love them so much is because they are very simple easy, accessible, you can buy them in the store, you can buy them whole, you can buy them sliced, and they impart a lot of flavor to whatever dish you're making. Yes. So, uh, and, and this dish in particular, there are very few ingredients, but the key ingredient is mushrooms. The mushrooms are what gives this dish all of its flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I've been making this dish for a few years now. It's a very easy recipe. It's chicken cutlets. These are these are chicken breasts that I, I filleted. So I turn them into cutlets. I have a quarter cup of flour here. I have uh, about, I don't know, probably half a pound to three quarters of a pound of quartered uh, large baby bella mushrooms. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I um, love those, the very large um, portobello mushrooms. What I do, yeah. I take the, the middle piece out, scrape it, and then I add, I saute some some spinach, 
and mm. I put it around, and then I put cheese, and Yummy. then I add a couple of other things. Mushrooms are so great. They're great. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you talked about stuffing mushrooms. We're gonna, we're gonna, we have another two packages in the refrigerator that we're gonna do for Christmas Day, that are gonna oh. be our side dish. So we're gonna stuff those. So yeah, mushrooms are very versatile. They're mm -hmm. very easy, and they impart a lot of flavor. Yeah, I've got some fresh thyme here. Oh, and good. Some fresh parsley. Uh huh. And just a, about a quarter cup of white wine and mm -hmm. a, and some chicken stock, mm -hmm. and that's the whole dish. Now, for my that's viewers, um, does it have to be specific for the for the white wine? Because I'm sure people no. say, "Oh, what kind of white wine well, should I get?" The only the only um, requirement per se is that it should be a white wine that you like to drink. Yeah, it shouldn't. Don't buy cooking wine. Don't buy don't buy wine that is made for cooking. If you have, you know, this this in particular, this is just a Pinot Grigio. You could use Pinot oh, okay. Grigio. I was going to ask. You could yeah. use Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, I would stay away from Sauvignon Blanc because it's a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. um, but but so you want to you just want to stay with a dry white wine. Pinot okay. Grigio and Chardonnay are, are yes. dry white wines. So yes. that that's what I've got. Just Pinot okay. Grigio. Uh huh. So, I mean, to, I could, I'll just start if you okay. like. I mean, we're watching. <laughs> all right. So we need to, uh, so as I said, these were whole chicken breasts that I filleted down the middle with, with a boning knife. And I just flattened them out a little bit with, uh, you know, with a, with a mallet. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we need to season these, right? So I'm going to now, season when, them with. When you flatten them, did you put saran wrap at the bottom and the top? And, and... I absolutely did. Okay. I absolutely did. You're right. You don't want to get. You don't. The the last thing you want to do is put these on your countertop and smash them <laughs> because you're going to get you're going to get schmutz all over your kitchen and yeah. you know yeah. chicken. You don't want to you don't want to commingle your chicken juices. You you, you want to keep things clean, right? So yes. yes, I put these on a cutting board, and I I filleted them. I fl I put them out. I you know was sort of uh, put them out in a line, and yes. I covered them with plastic wrap, and then I I just pounded them out a little mm -hmm. just to just to even them out. So so mm -hmm. uh, it that facilitates them to to facilitates uh even cooking yeah right yeah and i know i'm sure there are people out there wondering how thick should they be should they be really thin etc etc i would it's, say maybe a quarter of an inch or so yeah i mean it really depends on on your taste i prefer mine to be on the thin side so mm -hmm. i pound them out a little more but mm -hmm. if you like them thicker by all means cut yeah. them a little thicker um but yeah i think i think that a quarter inch is a good rule of thumb a good rule of thumb yeah yeah okay all right so now i'm just gonna as i said i'm gonna season these up i used some uh kosher salt and some fresh freshly ground black pepper uh-huh so i'm just gonna turn these over and season the other sides those are some nice pieces yeah, I, you know, these are, full disclosure, these are from Costco. These are Kirkland's uh, pre-packaged oh, chicken breasts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I buy them from Costco in a pack of, you know, I think there are eight packs with two in each pack. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I put them in the freezer. And as I need them, I just pull them out of the freezer. Yeah, yeah. They make life very easy. That's right. They truly do. Okay, so now I've seasoned the cutlets with salt and pepper. And now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dredge them in a little bit of flour. I really don't have that much flour. The flour is really just to uh, help brown the chicken and to uh, uh, ultimately to thicken the sauce. Yes. We're not going to put that much flour on here. We're just yeah. putting just a tiny little bit a dusting and a dusting maybe yes exactly a dusting uh -huh. and we're you know as i'm dredging this you can see that i'm shaking it off making sure to get off 
all of the excess. We just want a light, light coating. Yeah. Okay. Y'all going to throw down tonight, huh? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind tonight, the whole weekend. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, you can throw down as much as you can throw down during a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we're here in our in our little bubble um, in the building here. We really don't go out much at all. And um, so, you know, we're good, we're safe, we're healthy. And that's the most important part. That is right? the most important part. Yes, yes. Okay, so. Now I have dredged all of this chicken uh, in a light coating of flour. And then, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to saute them. Sorry about that. I just needed <laughs> no to problem. flick a little, uh, a little alert off of my screen. Oh, okay. okay. So I didn't I have... see anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I've got I've got my pan here. I've got a sort of a saute pan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be nonstick. Uh, right. This is just stainless steel because we're, yeah. we're sauteing this in at relatively high heat. And at some point, the chicken is going to release itself off the pan once right. it's completely seared. So, right. uh, so you don't, I mean, whatever pan you have is fine. You don't, yeah. it doesn't have to be stainless steel, but if that's all you have, that will do just fine. Yeah, because sometimes people, they, if they put, especially chicken in the pan, they want to move it around. The thing is, put it in the pan right. and leave it alone. Don't touch it. Just yeah, leave because it be. when it's ready, and I guess some people look at it and say, oh, it's burning, it's burning, it's too bright. No, when it's ready and no. you take the prongs and you lift it up, you can see, okay, time to turn it. It'll be waving exactly. at you. Okay, I'm ready, turn me over. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this pan over medium high heat. Uh -huh. um, so my gut will get a little, you know, the, 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 this induction cooktop has a little fan on the bottom. Hopefully yeah. it's not too loud. No, no, I don't hear it. Okay, no, all right, so, it's fine. so as this- Now, is you said up, you're using induction could you just explain just a little bit sure. about what induction is because some Absolutely. people might wonder what is induction sure so this is basically an electric cooktop with yes. a big massive magnet inside right and so that magnet uh has a lot of has chemical properties that interact with steel yes and and so when you turn it on it heats up the pan very, very quickly, yes. almost instantly. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't heat up. So I uh, hear I'm touching this cooktop. That's the nice it's thing not about hot. it. Yes. Right. Yes. So it only reacts with the stainless steel, and it only heats the stainless steel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so of course I'm using an induction cooktop, so I have to use a stainless steel. Uh, uh, cooking vessel, right? And I because believe on that's some the only way it can work. And I believe on some of them, there's a little symbol that they can look for that tells them that it is induction. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this is heating up, and as it comes to as it comes to temperature, we're oh, going to. Am I use... am I correct when now when a person uses induction, when you take the pan off the induct off the little stove there. The heat goes away. It Am I stops. Yes. It stops. Yes. So right. what happens is, if I take this off, this beeps. So it's telling me there's no there's no vessel on here. So yes. if I put it back, mm -hmm. then it starts heating again. Right. So, right. Yeah. That's the nice it's, thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, and you know, particularly in the summertime, these things they don't heat up. If you live in a in an, in an apartment like most of us do, like I do, Jersey City. <laughs> You know, you don't you don't really want a lot heating up your apartment in the middle of the summer, and these don't, don't throw off much heat at all. So right. it's it's a great little tool to have, and uh -huh. certainly it's a great tool to have if I'm cooking on Zoom. Because if I were to use this, yeah, <laughs> I, my back would be to you, so that wouldn't be any good. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil in this pan. 
and stay right there. I'm just going to get some butter out of the refrigerator. So, and then we're going to use a tablespoon of butter. And we're just going to let that melt. Yes. All right. And then once this is all melted, but before the butter, butter turns brown, you don't want it to turn brown. You just want to add in your chicken cutlets. Yes. And you may have to do this in batches. Like in this case, I just about have room for three. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have to do this, this third in a minute. Mm-hmm. So we're going to... And now people see how fast that that pan got hot. You know, it was like almost like yes. almost instantly. It's you didn't have it on there. You didn't even have it on there, um, like even two or three minutes, like yeah. normally on the regular stove. Yeah, that's what, that's what makes these things great. Um, and this pan is, is like, a, it's a five ply stainless steel. So it is, it, it really conducts a lot of heat. Um, and you said a so, five ply, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you explain to people what the five ply yeah. is? Yeah. So there are basically five layers of steel uh, that compose this vessel. Um, not not one layer, not two layers, five layers of steel. At the bottom. Um, at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. That really makes it super conductive yeah. um, when it heats up. And yeah. that, that makes everything that you put in here cook very evenly. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, I'm just, you know, I'm shaking this, just, you know, giving a little nudge here and there, just to make sure that uh, they don't adhere to the bottom of the pan, the but I the want pan. them to see. Mm -hmm. And they're every, it's starting to smell very good. I have and, um, you know, I have um, Zoom smell. I can smell. <laughs> yes, smell, <laughs> Zoom smell of vision is what yes, I have. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so you know, it's holiday. It's it's you know we're we're about to enter the holiday season. We're yes. basically in it, and I just want to take this opportunity to say cheers and, and cheers wish to everyone a happy holiday mm -hmm. uh, and take it take the opportunity to take a gulp of wine yes thank you so mm. basically we're gonna let these we're gonna let these cook for about uh, three minutes on each side yes yeah because uh, they're thin and they don't need thin, a lot of right. cooking yeah Mm -hmm. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so three minutes on each side should really, they should be basically cooked through. Mm -hmm. And so once they're cooked on both sides, I'm going to take them out of the pan. Yes. And I'm going to put them on a platter and just tent some aluminum foil over them to keep them warm. And then I'm going to start to make, to build the sauce, which is going to be very easy. Okay. Uh, very, very easy. So let's, let's take a look at these. I can hear them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to give them about another 30 seconds. Yeah, that's the fun part. Um, when I make, I make chicken sandwiches and I take the breast and I slice it like that, but I don't pound it. I don't pound it. I just cut it so less than a half an inch and then I season them and then I you know I do the three the flour the egg and the you know the panko breadcrumbs and yeah. I do the same thing put them in the pan when that panko turns brown it's time to turn it over yeah when that's done then I take it out because some people might not know when you take food out of the pan the temperature rises exactly yeah, so as soon as you put food in the pan, the, the temperature of the pan goes down. Goes right? down. So you have to you have to make up for that, and sometimes you have to. I, sort of I'm I'm lost for the word when you the take heat. it out and the temperature goes up. There is a word. For yeah, it. I know there is a term for that, and, and yeah. I, I'm having a senior moment too. So. Yes, yes, I'm having a moment. I'm blaming it on the wine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's, 
It's the wine swamp. I'm blaming it on the wine. Yes, yes. It's over. So, it's, it'll come to me. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Yeah. So I flipped these over, um, and they're well on their way. I think I can jam in this last one. There we go. Okay. So All then, right. when when they are finished, then you're going to take them out, and then you're going to add the, yes. the mushrooms. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to I'm not going to put them back on this plate, right? That's no, of course not. It's kind of dirty. Yeah, so, contamination. We don't want that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to use this one. It's nice and clean, and I'm going to take them out and tent them, cover them with aluminum foil to keep them warm, and of course they're. You know they're gonna continue cooking a little bit uh, yeah. while they're underneath mm -hmm. the aluminum mm -hmm. foil, which is fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes then, people don't realize that if okay, we cook a chicken at 165 degrees. What I do, I take it out maybe at 160 degrees, and then the temperature is just gonna rise and rise and rise, and then it should be done. I found that. Um, I am a, a food tester for America's Test Kitchen, and they their whole thing is it must come out at 165 degrees. And because I'm testing for their recipes, of course, but my preference is to let it be at 160 degrees. It might come up 10 degrees, and then that chicken is so moist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is so moist. By the moist. way, I should tell you that I am also a tester for technically speaking i'm a tester for america's test kitchen oh but i have i have never <laughs> tested one of their recipes yet i mean I, no, I when i say that i haven't tested one of their recipes i've made plenty of their recipes i am such a huge huge devotee of america's test kitchen but i never follow their protocol and i never write up the review and i never send it in i just make the recipe and say do i like it or do i not like it yeah was this easy was it not easy yeah um so 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 they send me you know uh recipes to test every few weeks every maybe once a month yeah but i yeah. never i just never do the official you know i have i have and if it doesn't come out right i let them know but that was like well, that's, that's two, cool, that was like though. two years ago when I was starting out, and um, I thought it was really, really good, really good. It was a way for me to learn how to work with recipes, and sometimes they can be a little hard. Um, they, yeah, yeah. I found they recipes, can be hard, but I really love, I love America's Best Kitchen because as even even the most difficult recipes. I mean, if you're somebody who is interested in cooking, they're they're not super super complicated the recipes no. to follow, and you know, if it's something that 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 interests you, you cook it, you make it, if yeah. you like it, then it becomes part of your repertoire. Right. I think that's Otherwise, great. it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So these these are for the most part. Good oh, to go. Those are good. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna give this one, give them like another few minutes. Not a few minutes, like maybe a minute. <laughs> I know, I know. But you know what? <laughs> the thing, chicken is one of my favorites. One Mine of my too. All time favorite chicken, very fish versatile, and, and turkey. Chicken, fish, and turkey. Um, everybody, as we know, do not like fish, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I I like um, I like tilapia. I love shrimp, red snapper. Yes, I like porgies, but porgies is too bony. It's you know, it's like you have to sit there and pick with your fingers, so you don't lodge a bone in your throat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and salmon can be that way too. You really have to be careful about salmon. Yeah, you have to sit fresh. there and run your finger on the salmon yeah. and get some tweezers, which I have from school, and pull <laughs> them out. Oh, yeah. Pull them out. Yeah. But you can do the same thing with um, with porgies. Porgies is, you know, you, you bake. And I like baking it. I like frying some fish. 
to me that is one of the best but my whole secret that is, is the best my whole secret is when i fry fish i'll tell you my secret people like <clears throat> i squeeze a lemon on it while it's frying nice yeah lemon is always great fish, right? yeah yeah and then later on i might put a little a uh, little bit more lemon on it but while it's frying and when you squeeze that lemon you know the steam is going to go shh, and it's it's the best the best. That's the best. Yeah. All right. So I took the chicken out of the pan and I've tented it in this small platter. So now it's time for us to start on the mushrooms. I'm lowering the heat to like the lower part of medium high. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toss in my mushrooms, right? And I'm going to let those just start to cook down a little bit um, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna salt them give them a little seasoning and I'm gonna crack some pepper over them yes all right and so we're just you know we're gonna so mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them, yes right? they do so so the important thing is to not don't even though the pan this pan is very dry right now right mm -hmm. um but that's okay because now the mushrooms are in the pan and the mushrooms as they heat they're going to yes. start releasing release. a lot of moisture yeah right yeah. so what we want to do that moisture is that moisture from the mushrooms in addition to the white wine and the broth that we're going to add that's going to deglaze the pan there's a yes. lot of a lot of brown bits on the bottom here. oh yeah yeah and yeah those the, all of that is that's all flavor we don't want to yeah. get rid of that we want to we want to create a sauce with that right and that so, sauce as they call in collard greens is hot liquor hot liquor exactly <laughs> Yes, exactly. So we that make is, our own that's version. your pot liquor. <laughs> exactly, our own version of pot liquor here. Yeah. So, yeah. So it is, and it's so good. it's it can be so good, especially when you're making collard greens and you have it le a little left over in the pot. Just put it in the thing, and you can just drink it Absolutely. because it's all good because it's collard greens, you know, and exactly. the flavor is coming oh out. Oh my of god, it. it's amazing! Amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now that these are starting to. They're, they're starting to darken. They're starting to brown a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to add the remaining two tablespoons of butter to the pan. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mix And you know that what up. I like cooking when I do mushrooms? I think they, they marry is shallots and yes. mushrooms. Absolutely. Oh. Shallots, mushrooms, and parsley, and white oh, wine are like... Oh my goodness, they are so good it's together. the trinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And All the right, trinity, so... folks, though, who, those who do not know what it is, if I'm correct, let's see what my mind is, bell pepper, carrots, and celery. That's right. The trinity yep. meaning um, coming from New Orleans. That's right. That's right. That's the, the holy trinity that is the base of gumbo. Right? Yes. You need you need to have those three things to yes. make the gumbo. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so the butter has now melted, and our um, our mushrooms are starting to sort of break down and release their moisture. So we're going to continue to let those break down and brown in a very uh -huh. gentle, slow way. Um, but as they are breaking down and as they're sauteing in the butter, we're going to add fresh thyme. So this yeah. thyme was, is from my garden. That's right. So That's right. You a, do. You have, have a garden, garden on the roof. Of my on building. the roof. Yes. And we grew fresh thyme. I didn't get there and this so, summer, but maybe next summer. <laughs> hopefully next summer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is all fresh thyme from my garden that I'm going to add to the pan. And then I'm just going to, whoops, 
when he was one of the mushrooms hopped out there. The mushrooms said, "Not me, not me." See? <laughs> yeah, they keep. Not, they don't want to. They don't want to. They want to be caught. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, so good. I'm sure it smells good too. It does smell amazing in here, I have oh, to say. Oh. All right. So now I'm going to take this is about a quarter cup of, of dry white wine that uh -huh. I'm going to add to the pan. Uh -huh. And this is going to deglaze. So, what you want to yeah. do is, you know, if you've got a wooden spoon or something that is not metallic, particularly if you're using a stainless steel pan, yeah. uh, you want to scrape up whatever bits are stuck to the pan because mm -hmm. all of that is going mm -hmm. to become the base Now you added the, the white sauce. wine. Could you explain to people um, when they're cooking and if they're not on an induction of stove like you're using, like if they're on a the gas, when they are adding any type, say brandy or anything to a pot where there is a flame underneath, they need yes. to take the pan. You can explain. Yeah, so if you're going to deglaze, if you're going to add anything to your pan while you're, put anything that is alcohol based, right? Yeah. So anything that is alcohol based or grease based, uh, and you are cooking on an open flame stove, you do need to take that pan off of the flame when mm -hmm. you add it because it can flare up and, and it can cause a fire. Yes. And, it, and you can get seriously burned. You have yes. to be very, very, very careful yes. when you when you are adding any kind of alcohol-based mm -hmm. liquid to mm -hmm. your pan when you're when you are working yes. with an open and, flame. And the same with um, if you have an aerosol can, and you know how yes. to spray the pan. People should realize that when you spray the That's right. pan you and don't you want to use you've got to take your pan off, off the, flame the stove and this. do yes. it because it will backfire and yes. it will come to the can and you can get hurt and plenty yes. of people that is for us That's Anthony, a, really good, a good kitchen tip <laughs> yes that is a very good kitchen tip you're right yeah yeah you really do take have to be careful plate. about those things yeah okay. that's why i'm a big proponent of induction cooktops so there's no play <laughs> okay so i added the wine which is now it's sort of evaporating so i'm also going to add about a quarter cup of uh chicken stock and as you can see i just i eyeballed it uh, yeah i did not use a measuring cup i think I two really turns two, two turns might two turns might be a quarter of a cup if you go one yeah to I, I think you're right. Yeah, about a yeah. quarter. Mm -hmm. So I just I want this. I want this to reduce just a little bit. Um, and once it is reduced a little bit, then mm. uh, I'm going to add the chicken back in, and I'm going to add uh, this fresh parsley. Parsley. And then yeah. the and then the dish is going to be done. That's oh, it. Right. I mean, that... There's nothing, really is nothing to this dish. It's very easy. And, and luckily, good... I live in your neighborhood, not too far. I'll be over. That's right. Send the drone. <laughs> when when all of this garbage, is, yes. COVID garbage is over, yes. Yes. you and Laudo have an open invitation to yes. come here for dinner. I'd be Thank very you. happy to cook for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll make this. I mean, Although now you know the secret. I mean, this is nothing. This is very easy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You won't be probably won't be very impressed, but that's okay. So At maybe what I good. maybe what I can do, I'll put your recipe in my cookbook. How about that? Yeah, go go right ahead. By the way, I, this is I full disclosure. This is not my recipe. I did not develop this. Uh -huh. This is this is sort of like. I, sort of you know you read things online and you add things you subtract things blah yes. blah blah blah, blah. I yes. this is basically this is a uh a, an old martha stewart recipe oh. <laughs> from way back when uh -huh. Uh -huh. um and it has become a staple for me i mean i yeah. i make this all the time because it's easy I have yeah. chicken. I always have chicken in the refrigerator. I yes. always have mushrooms. 
You can mm-hmm. go to the store, you can go to Central Avenue, buy fresh parsley, mm-hmm. buy thyme, mm-hmm. and you're done. You're, yes. That's it. That's all you Central, need. To Central make a dish Avenue like this. here in uh, Jersey City Heights. That's right. Yeah, that's where this is the area we are. Um, and the vegetable store, what is that called? Um, oh, um, Sweet Pineapple. Huh? Sweet pineapple. Sweet pineapple, ladies and gentlemen. If you're from, I was there today. From, oh, I really? Bought, I bought eight heads of uh, baby bok choy. Oh my goodness! If you're from Jersey City area or close to it, you have to go to Central Avenue. I don't know the address. Absolutely. Or Pam. Well, it's it's next to it's it's in between the Chase Bank yeah. and uh, Dulce de Leche. Bakery. Yes. So yeah. It's right. It's sandwiched right in between. Yes. Yeah. It's a very simple Central. store when you walk in. It's not elaborate, but let me tell you, I went there to get my Roman tomatoes when I was doing my jarring, <laughs> and <laughs> that that was good. Maybe um, maybe one day, um, Anthony, you and I, we could do some jarring. We could do a oh, that would be a, a lot Zoom. Of fun. I would love that. And da 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 da. We could do that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Sounds good. All, All right. right. So now I'm going to add this fresh parsley. Mm-hmm. How much parsley? It's about, I would say it's about a half a cup. And uh, how much, chopped. how much mushroom? This is about a pound of mushrooms. A pound of mushroom. Okay. Yeah. It's a pound of mushrooms and about a, a half a cup of freshly chopped parsley. All right. So mm. now that's looking good. So yeah. Now it's time to add the chicken back into the pan. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add this chicken back into the pan. I'm going to nestle it in. Yeah. To make sure that everything gets coated with the sauce, right? Because yes. the chicken has a little bit of flour on it, which is going to help thicken, it. thicken yeah. the sauce. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks good. Right. So that looks good. I'm going, to, I'm going to turn each of these over now that they've been in the sauce. Looks and good. we're just going to let that simmer for a few minutes. And we're going to take the juices. Yeah, the you remaining know, like the juice. juices that are mm-hmm. in the dish. We're going to put that in. And that, Renee, is the dish it is wow. sauteed chicken with mushrooms and a white wine sauce you saw it right here it was super easy to make yes you can make it with stuff that you have in your freezer and in your pantry or your refrigerator uh-huh. and it is a it's a it is a restaurant quality dish that you can put together you saw it, it well took about, you made it took you less made than it, 25 Anthony. minutes to make it Anthony, you made it, so it's better than restaurant quality. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> no, no, believe me. There are restaurants, you, way better restaurants than, this, than there's my nothing, company, There's nothing better than home-cooked food. I agree. I agree with that. And, you know, again, we're living in a pandemic, and we're all sort of cloistered in our own homes and one of the i mean one of the things that i one of the more positive things that i that i found uh during the pandemic was that more and more people were cooking at home right they didn't have a choice it was either you ordered out or you cooked and people were making bread and they were experimenting with recipes yeah and that just that made my heart sing. I love and they're that doing because... it so much that when I went to buy the ball mason jars, they sold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I, I mean, told you. I, there, I, was, I there was there was there was also a flour shortage earlier in the year. People, yeah, you could not buy flour. All purpose flour was not available. And then uh, Lotto, he was making. And Lotto, he was making um, pizza, and he needed yeast. The little packages couldn't find them. Couldn't find it. Yes, that's true. I had yeah. the same problem. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to make yeast, and I wanted to make bread, and I couldn't. Could not find yeast in any of the stores. So when I found it, I bought three or four of them. I said, put this one on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony, thank you so much. Oh, that's my pleasure. Talking, Let's just you can plate do your this plating. up. 
Thank you so much for spending the time to show us your saute chicken with mushroom in a white sauce. It looks My pleasure. so, so good. Look at that. There you nice have it. and hot and the steam is coming off of it. It's just, it's just ready. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look Come at that. It. Really nice. Oh, and I see the, the sauce on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, it's a great dish. Yeah. Easy. My pleasure, mm -hmm. Renee. I really, I Thank love you so doing these much. little chats with you. It's fun, and I have to tell you, this is the first cooking demonstration I've ever done. I was going to ask you. Before. I was going to ask you that in the very beginning. Have you ever done this before? Never and, done this before. And this it's fun, right? New. It's fun. I, it's fun. I had a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Let's what I'm do gonna do, again. what I'm gonna do next year, I'm gonna pull people like yourself and a couple of other people, and we're gonna have Zoom windows open, and I'm gonna have everyone cooking together. That so great. I can tag I'm in ahead. and say, Anthony, what you making? So and so, what you're making? So and so, what you're making? But if I can get the people who are not camera shy. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the other thing. You have to find people who, you know, I mean, for me, this is not, I'm not on camera. I'm just having it. Just, I'm, it's like you're on the other side of, of, mm -hmm. of my counter here. So we're just talking yeah. and chatting and then, you yeah, know. And having, having our wines. Well, Anthony, oh, yes. I'm, I need a refill, but anyway. Mm. As do I. Mm. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Anthony Spirito. He is a member of Hudson County Community College's Culinary Club. Join. It doesn't take a lot. It's just a click of the mouse and you'll be there. Upload your pictures and you'll have a good time. You do not have to do live. Anthony chose to do live. But when you cook, take a picture and upload it. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Just get involved. And, That's huh? all you need to do. Just get it. Just get involved. Just get involved. That's what we need. We need to 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 work together. Exactly. Thank you again, Anthony. And I will be Bye, in Renee. touch. Okay. Take Mwah. care. Okay. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy okay. Holidays. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Wow. Wasn't that good? Anthony can cook and he got a nice kitchen and he's a very, very, very nice person. Thank you, Anthony. And like we always joke around and talk and I call him Chef Anthony. Thank you so much, Chef Anthony, for, for spending the time and showing us how you fix this fabulous, fabulous chicken with mushroom and a white sauce. Unbelievable. The best. As you know, my best friend says Deborah. Okay, now it's time for us to make the Philly. We got the rolls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, now I'm using these. Actually, are sausage rolls, and I found them to be a little bit better uh, than the regular Frank rolls because the Frank rolls, you know, they're kind of small. These are really, really nice, and you see the size of it. Really nice. I bought this at one of those big supermarkets. Okay. Now, here we go. What I did, I toasted them. I have two. This one was toasted in the, the, the fat from the bacon, because remember now, you're gonna take, if I didn't tell you before, I apologize. After that's rolled up, you're gonna put it in the pan and then you're just gonna fry it, okay? Until that bacon gets crispy. And of course, inside, Frank is gonna cook, okay? So what I did, I took the roll and I put it in the same grease and it's gonna give the bun a little flavor. This was afterwards because this one soaked up all the, all the, um, the oil that this one had. This one soaked it up and this one didn't have one, so they were fighting, no, I'm just joking. Okay, so look, here it is. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna add just a touch of mayonnaise, just a touch, not a lot on both sides. See that? And I'm only adding a little bit because we have other things 
that we want to put on here and we don't want the mayonnaise to take over, right? And some people might say, mayonnaise, why do you put mayonnaise? This is how they would do it. And I watched them from Mexico. All right, so now we have this. The next part, and when I made this last week, I forgot to, to get it. This is poblano peppers. And what I did, I put them on the stove and I roasted them until they got really, really black, right? Then I took those and I put them in a, in a bowl and covered it with saran wrap until it sweated. And then I was able to remove all of the, um, the roasted part, you know, the black part. Worked out really fine. Now, you could remove all or you can leave, oh, I'm getting tongue tied. You could remove all or you can leave a little. That's up to you, okay? So here we go. Now, here I have my sausage already cooked. Now look how it look how it comes out on both sides. It's nice and crispy as you can see. The bacon adhered to it, okay? Make sure the flame, just I can turn this off. Make sure the flame is not too high. You don't want to burn it. So right here, this is perfect. It came out really good. And you just add that right into the center. Now imagine how this is gonna taste when you have all the other ingredients added to it. It's gonna be wonderful. You're gonna go, oh my goodness, this is, this is the bomb. This is to die for. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. Nice. All right, next, mm, let me see. I have some salsa. I have some queso, chorizo, guacamole. These three are going to go on top of this, all right? So let's see, what do we want to do next? Mm, we're going to do the queso. All right, let's take some. Let's move you out the way so everybody can see. Just going to take a little. Okay, looking good. All right, next, I have some ketchup. Oops. I have some ketchup. I'm gonna take the ketchup, just a little bit. I'm gonna, can you see what I'm doing? No, right? I'm gonna take the ketchup, just gonna put a little and spread it on both sides. Because Everybody likes sausage or a um, frankfurter with ketchup and also mustard. I have it here. It's a little mustard, just a pinch. Mm -mm -mm. This is gonna be really good. And of course I have to make some more because we're gonna throw down tonight. You know how, you, you know how that goes, I'm gonna throw down. Okay, so. Here we go. We have our hot dog wrapped with bacon, fried really good, put on top of pavamo um, uh, pepper in which I roasted on the stove, got all the seeds out, cleaned it off. Do not wash the black off of your pepper. Don't put it underneath the water because what's happening, you, you're rinsing away the flavor. Just take your time, take a fork or a spoon and scratch off the black. It will come off or a little small knife, which I use my little tiny one. I took my time and it came off. Do not wash it even when you do the same thing to a, um, a pepper you put on. Don't wash it. Take a damp towel, it'll come off. All right, so we have this. This is looking good. Let's get this on this side. All right, there we go. Next, salsa. Now this salsa was made here at home. So it is really fresh. Look at this, look at that. So I'm gonna take this. And I'm going to add this, oh my, it's getting heavy too. Look at this, oh. Ooh, this was made today this salsa and it smells so freaking good. Okay, salsa, I could put you over there. 
and queso, I can put you over there. And let's keep on moving. Now, here we go. Let's see if I can get it to stand up. It's so heavy that it's gonna just fall over to the side, you know? All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna sip some wine. Mmm, so good. Whew, that looks good. Okay, what do I have next? Guacamole, yes, you gotta have some guacamole. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it right neatly if I can on top. Oh, look at that. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that looks good. Wow. The best. This is really best. And we still got chorizo, chorizo put on that. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? You see that? Look at it. Wow, imagine having some of this. You'd be going, oh, I'm so full. I gotta sit down and take a nap and then get up and then have another one, right? You know how it is, you know how it is. Okay, now. Okay, here we go. Teresa, on top. Mm. Woo! Look at this. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my goodness. Now this was fried and it's going to have a little crunch to it. <clears throat> Let me wipe my hands. Woo! A little sip. Sinuses. <clears throat> I've been dealing with these sinuses like forever. But it's going away. That's the most important thing. All right, well, thank you everybody for coming back and watching the show. Every week, um, I'm having different guests come on. I had Chef Claude, um, Claude, Chef, oh, here we go. <laughs> Chef Claude Lewis, he won CHOP uh, for May 2019. He was on the last episode. And this week I have um, Anthony, um, he's coming on, as I say, Chef Anthony Spirito, he's coming on. And then in the future, I have, who do I have coming? Um, oh, Dana Royster, she's um, a home cook. She's gonna be on the show. Um, Mexi Beast BBQ, stand for barbecue. He is coming on to the show. Yes, he's coming on um, in a few weeks. And uh, who else? Misty. Chef Jonathan, I know I'm gonna pronounce his name, his last name wrong, but I have all these different guests lined up uh, to come on the show and entertain us all. Okay, so once again, here's our beautiful, beautiful um, hot dog sandwich, and I hope that you try it. If you have any questions about anything for the show, you can always reach me at chefrenehewitt.com. Until the next time, Enjoy your day, wash your hands, and stay safe. Bye-bye.